Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Welcome back to Sunday morning in the old cookbook show. Today we're going to do another recipe out of this old cookbook. And when I say old, this is a very old cookbook. This book in my hand was published in 1685. Um, so this book has been hanging around for 337 years at this point. Um, a very long time. And so this was actually published in 1685. It's a book that was written in 1660, and it's a, it's a book written by uh, a man who was trained in France, who was sent to France at a very young age to train in the kitchens of France, came back to England, wrote this cookbook, and the book is written not for the homeowner. It's not written for a home cook at all. It's written for people who already know how to cook. It's written for people who have trained in the biggest kitchens in Europe and who cook in the grandest houses in Europe who can afford to buy the cookbook. And so it's written in a way that there is very little information. It's just giving you ideas. And today we're going to make a recipe called a made dish of butter and eggs. It's a pie. Really what it comes down to is it's a pie. Um, and we've done this pie on previous old cookbook shows in the past. Um, it, this pie eventually becomes a marble pie. And so we've done a version from 1831 and I think one from 1855. This is generally thought to be the first written version of this pie or one of the first written versions. There's some people who say it goes back even further. I haven't seen it with my own eyes, so who knows? And I'll read, the, I'll read the recipe to you and we'll go from there. Take the yolks of 24 eggs and strain them with cinnamon, sugar, and salt. Then put melted butter to them, some fine minced pippins, minced citron, put it in your dish of paste and put slices of citron round about it. Bar it with puff paste and the bottom also or short paste in the bottom. Uh except for the absence of actual measurements, it's, it's a fairly straightforward recipe. So what I have here in front of me are 24 egg yolks. I've spared you having to watch me crack and separate 24 eggs. So we'll just give that a little bit of a whisk just to uh, break them up. To that, I'm gonna add sugar, somewhere between uh, half and three quarters of a cup. Salt, that's just a good pinch. Cinnamon, about a teaspoon of cinnamon, and we'll whisk that in. And I've got about a quarter cup of melted butter, or it was melted um, when, I, when I started. It's hardened up a little bit. It is winter time in Canada. It doesn't take too long. So put that in. Now, let's talk about pippins. Um, pippins and apples. This book, this book was first written in 1660. In between 1660 when it was first written and published and 1685 when this was published, the recipes weren't really changed all that much. Um, they weren't updated, the language wasn't updated. So this was written in the dates are a little bit wishy-washy, but it's written in early modern English, roundabout. Let's call it early modern English. And so some of the words are different. It's also written um, before the great vowel shift, but when this, was, this version was published, it's during sort of in the midst of the great vowel shift. So English was in this great flux at this time period. I'm not a linguist, so, you know, do your own research. I'm giving you sort of a broad overview. And so in this book, you see the use of uh, letters that are no longer used in English, like the thorn or the long S. Um, and the long S continues into the late 1700s in cookbooks that I own. But the thorn, you don't really see. I see a few in this one, and that's it. Um, but another part of this shift in English is in what some of the items in the recipes are actually called. 
And so it calls for pippins. And there are lots of recipes in this book that call specifically for pippins. And a pippin in 1685 is not a specific type of apple. Like today you would go out and you'd buy a uh, Cox's Pippin or an Arbor Marl Pippin or any other apple that has something and then Pippin. It'd be like going out and buying a Macintosh apple or a Fuji apple or a, you're buying something a Pippin. In 1685, Pippin meant almost all apples were called Pippins. Um, except for some apples which were hard, sour, and not eaten fresh. They were called codlings, and you'll see recipes in this book for codlings. Apple, in this time period, meant fruit. Just the same as we would say fruit. I'm going to the store to buy some fruit, and you might come home with a selection of, of fruit. But, you know, maybe not these two, even though these are fruit. This is definitely not a fruit, this is a root vegetable. But in 1680, this was all called apple. And so this was apple of paradise. Today we'd call it a banana. Tomatoes, you probably wouldn't see a lot of tomatoes in 1685 in the marketplace in England, but they would be called apples. And you see the legacy of that in other languages in that today, um, pomodoro in Italian means uh, golden apple. That's what tomatoes are still called in that language. This is a potato in English, but in French, it's pomme de terre. So um, apple of the earth or earth apple. That is a legacy of all of these things being called apples. And in English, pineapple. That is a legacy of this naming convention in this time period. So when you see Pippin, it's not calling for a specific type of apple, like a Cox's Pippin, like I said before. It's just calling for an apple find an apple. And in 1685, there were really only a couple of varieties of apples that were known. Apples are a real weird fruit in terms of the way they reproduce and how you can make them reproduce. Um, you would have just got the apple, whatever apple was growing around you for the most part. There were a couple though. Um, and research apples if you really want to know about that. This is just a broad overview. So Pippin, just an apple any apple. I'm going to put that in. I could not, um, for the life of me, for this find citron that I could shred. So I've got here a plate of candied or preserved peel of orange, lemon, and lime. I'm going to use that. This is one of those things that for the cocktail show, when I am, um, when I'm juicing lemons, limes, oranges, any citrus fruit for the show. I keep the peel and I candy them. And then the, uh, the simple syrup that I candy them in, I use that in the cocktails as well. So I always kind of have this on hand. It's going to approximate what, uh, what citron is. And citron's a really weird fruit too. You can look that up. Still available some places, some time of the year. So we'll Put some of that in. I'm going to say that's a good amount. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I did make my own short crust pastry for the base, but I didn't make my own puff pastry. Uh, I, I'm going to use store-bought for this one. So I'm going to use a pizza cutter and I'll cut some strips. Probably should have used a ruler to measure those, but it'll be okay. Short crust, give this a bit of a stir. I wasn't sure what size of pie plate to use. I hope I've chosen correctly. Ooh. Almost, a little bit too full. Let's weave on the top. Now there are some extensive diagrams in this book about how to decorate the tops of pies, but strangely, there are no diagrams that deal with how to bar a pie with puff pastry. And I'm assuming that it means 
a lattice top. Um, I am making a big assumption, so I'm just going to go with this and see what happens. So I've got a little bit of egg wash. I'm just going to put it here to get the puff pastry to stick down around the edge. It should do okay. And just a little egg wash across the top. It's going to boil over. It's going to make a mess. So I'm going to put it on a tray with a piece of parchment paper just to make sure that I can clean it up easily. And I'm going to cook this in the house because in this oven here is a pot roast. So I can't put it in that oven. I'm going to bake it at 350 just because that's what you bake things at. And uh, I don't know for how long and I don't know how to tell if it's going to be done. So I'll see you back here for a tasting. Now, as I predicted, it boiled over and made quite a mess on the other baking tray. But, you know, that's why I put it underneath. Hey, friends. Hey, Jules. I see you uh, have your Apple collection out. <laughs> yes. Did he give you that lecture? <laughs> it wasn't really a lecture. <laughs> How'd these turn out? I've been out... working on them for a few days. Yeah, they're good. They're good. They're always mm. worthwhile. Those are good. It's always just a little bit more orange in them, flavor yeah. in them. So here we have a, a made dish of butter and eggs. Oh, made as an M-A-D-E or M-A-I-D? M-A-D-E. Okay. A made dish of butter and eggs. Yes. Okay. It's a pie. <laughs> it's a pie. <clears throat> That's a big, it's, it, it certainly holds its form. Yes. With the egg. Yes. Now it's only egg yolks, which Oh, is why okay, the so color that, is kind of it's very yellowy that way. It's very fruity. It's That's pretty good. Got a little custardy kind of like yeah. the egg adds a little custardy kind of thing. Uh, you did a great job on this. This is beautiful. So let's thank you. <laughs> I cheated on the puff paste though. That's that's frozen <laughs> puff pastry, but the but the actual undercrust. Is mine. That's the one that I made. That's actually really good. Mm -hmm. I would add a. Did, is there cinnamon in it? If, mm -hmm. Yeah. A little bit of cinnamon, and that that adds an mm -hmm. incredible flavor to it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I would probably add more cinnamon. So, the other two videos that we've made of this pie recipe as it progresses through time, from 1831 and 1855, <clears throat> I think. I'd have to go back to the video. We didn't like them. Hmm. This one. I really like. I like that. I was a little bit worried with 24 egg yolks. I don't know what I'm going to do with 24 egg whites. I was going to say, whites. are we having a lot? That's a lot of... Um, that's a lot of... of meringue. <laughs> meringue. That's yeah. a lot of meringue. I don't know sure what else to make with that many. Uh... Macaroons? How many macaroons can one... one <laughs> that's not... Anyway. Anyway, that's a lot of egg whites. This is good. This is good. So, um... How am I having that piece right there? Hmm. I'm a little wishy-washy on what I put in here. I think I said most of what I put in, like in terms of measurements, because the recipe gives absolutely no measurements. Some stuff? Other than 24 egg yolks, it says, and then you'd throw in this other stuff. So. No dates? Hmm. No. No. <laughs> okay. 1685, a made dish of butter and eggs turns out to be a really good apple pie. There you go. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.